Hi. This is the second video on processing HTML tables from websites. In the first video we learned how to capture data from HTML tables. In this video we will learn how to use that data to populate Excel files. Let's quickly review the goal of our automation solution. We want to create a workflow that will populate one row of this table with exchange rate data obtained from this website. In the previous video, we captured the data table and found that the data is stored in its row text property. We also captured the date and time at which the exchange rate data was last updated. In this video we will learn how to populate these few cells with the data obtained from the website. Our general approach will be as follows. First, we will populate a list with the names of the currencies we are interested in by reading the list from the Excel file. Then, we will create a list of all the currencies listed in the table on the website by reading the first column of the captured data. Next, we will create a list of the actual exchange rates by reading the third column of the table. Finally, we will parse through the long lists we created from the website to find the data we want and will then write that to the Excel file. We will start off by building a list of the currencies listed in the Excel file. Create a list variable of type text. Call it list of Excel currencies. Add a new step to the workflow. Call it create list of Excel currencies. Drag our list variable into the builder area. The assign function is added automatically. We will populate the list using the function get row values in Excel, which is located in the MS Office built-in service under without Excel. Enter the full path to the Excel file. Enter the sheet name. We have to enter the cell of the first cell in the row we want to capture. Switch back to the Excel file. Our list starts at cell B1. Save the project. We should run the workflow to make sure that our first list gets populated correctly. First close the Excel file. The Excel file must be closed whenever using any of the functions from the without Excel group. Navigate to the list variable. We see that it has the values we wanted. Return to editing mode. The next step is to build the list of currencies listed in the HTML table and the list of exchange rates in the HTML table. Create a list of type text. Call it list of table currencies. Create another list of type text. Call it list of table rates. Add a new step to the workflow. Call it create lists from table. We will now cycle through the rows of the captured table and will add the relevant values from each row to our two new lists. Drag the for each statement into the builder area. Select the rows text property of the captured table. First, we will add the currency name from the first column the current row to the list of table currencies. Drag the append element at end method of the list of table currencies into the for each loop. Populate the parameter using the current row's get value at position method. Since the currency name is in the first column of the table, set position to 1. Next, we will add the exchange rate from the third column the current row to the list of table rates. Drag the append element at end method of the list of table rates into the for each loop.
populate the parameter using the current rows get value at position method. Since the exchange rate is in the third column of the table, set position to 3. Now, what would happen if the workflow reached this step before the website had actually opened? The for each loop would see that the row text property is empty, and our lists would be left empty. We need to make sure that this step waits until the row text property has been populated. To do so, we will place a condition on the transition into the step. We'll make the transition wait until the value of the rows count property is greater than zero. Select the transition. Drag in an if statement. Select the rows count property. Set the condition to larger than zero. Save the project. Run the workflow. Let's view the two lists in the debug panel. They are both populated as expected. Return to editing mode. We will now work on populating the Excel file. We will populate a row variable with the data we want to add to the Excel file. Create a row variable called row for Excel. A row variable is a general complex variable. Add a new step to the workflow and call it populate Excel file. We will cycle through the list of currencies needed for our Excel file. For each currency, we will find the exchange rate and add that to the row for Excel. Drag in a for each statement. Select the list of Excel currencies. This variable lists the currencies listed in the Excel file. Let's rename element as currency. We want to populate a cell in the row for Excel. Drag in its add element at end method. We want to populate the row cell with an exchange rate, so select the get value at position method from the list of rates variable. We need to specify which rate we want. We want the rate that corresponds to the currency in the list of Excel currencies. If we find the position of that currency in the list of table currencies, we can use that same value to specify the position of the rate we want. For example, if we are trying to find the rate for the euro, EUR, our process would be as follows. Search for EUR in the first column. We find it at position 3. Now if we want the exchange rate for euros, we will take it from position 3 from the list of rates. Select the find position of value method of the list of currencies variable. Set the value to look for to the value of the currency of the current iteration. We have now populated the row variable with the values of the exchange rates. We need to also add the date and time. Because the date and time must be added at the start of the row, drag the rows add element at end method to above the for each method. Set the value to the inner text property of the date time screen element.
Before we can write our row to the Excel file, we need to create another row that specifies the format of the data we are entering into the Excel file. Create another row variable and call it row for format. Drag its add element at end method into the builder area. We will record the date and time as a simple text string. Now we need to add another element with the text decimal for each of the currencies. We will specify the format as decimal so that the exchange rates will be treated as decimals in Excel. This is important if you want to perform calculations on them or create charts using the data in Excel. Again, we can use a for each statement. Select the list of Excel currencies. Drag in the add element at end method and set its value to decimal. This way we are adding one cell with the text decimal to the row of formats for each exchange rate. Finally, we can write to the Excel file. Since we want to add a row right at the bottom of the file, we will use the append rows to Excel function from the without Excel group in the MS Office built-in service. Enter the full path to the Excel file. Set the sheet to Sheet 1. For the data format, the parameter expects a list of rows, not just a single row. So select Temporary List and add a row for format variable to the temporary list. For the values, the parameter also expects a list of rows. Select Temporary List and add our row for Excel to the temporary list. Save the project. We will now test the workflow. Make sure to close Edge in the Excel file if they are open. Run the workflow. Open the Excel file. The first row is populated as we had planned. Close the Excel file and run the workflow again. Open the Excel file. Note that the second line is populated, but the row is a lot longer than it should be. That is because when we ran the workflow the second time, it added the new data to the list variables without first clearing the variables. Back in Automation Studio, return to Editing Mode. Return to Excel and clear out the lines we added and save the file. You may not be able to save the file before returning to Editing Mode in Automation Studio. Add a new workflow step called Clear Lists. We will first clear the row for Excel variable. Drag in its Remove All method. This clears all contents from the variable. Then drag in the remove all methods of our other list and row variables. Let's add one more step to close edge when the workflow ends. Add a new step called close edge. To close edge, use the close tab by title function from the generic browser built-in function. We don't have to type in the full title of the tab. We can type an XE star, where the star is a wildcard. Save the project. Run the workflow a few times. Open the Excel file. Now we see that the file is populated as expected. Note that the rates on the website 
are updated only every few minutes, so you might not see differences if you rerun the workflow immediately. Thank you for watching.